Hey everybody, it's Lo and welcome back to my channel, Lo Without Limits. In this video, I'm going to show you a dumbbell only leg workout. So if you wanna see that, then just keep watching. I love leg days. I've said it before in my previous leg day video. I love getting under the bar to squat. I like doing deadlifts, little barbell hip thrusts, everything. I also love leg machines, the leg extension, the leg curl, the lying hamstring curl, which really gets those hamstrings. But sometimes, especially because there aren't a ton of leg machines always available or all of the barbell racks are taken so you can't do squats and everything, sometimes it's hard to get a really good leg day workout in where you wanna do squats and deadlifts and everything. So I thought that I'm going to put together a quick little dumbbell only leg workout routine and this one you can do anywhere. Also, if you go to a hotel gym where there typically aren't any racks to do squats or anything, this video I actually got at my friend's apartment gym, which there were no racks, but there were dumbbells, which is perfect because just because there's only dumbbells doesn't mean you can't get a great workout in. So let's get straight into this workout. The very first one that I did was goblet squats. Now, goblet squats I really like because they help you keep your chest higher and you're able to squat down a little bit deeper. Your elbows can go in between your knees. You can really get that full squat. And this, as well as regular squats, when your legs are a bit more narrow together, about shoulder width apart, will target your quads a bit more. And the wider out you have your legs, or if you decide to do it in the sumo squat form, then that will target your hamstrings and glutes a little bit more. So having it at shoulder width apart is right there in the middle, gets pretty good for both the glutes and the quads. And of course, more narrow is more quads. The wider you get will be more glutes. This you can do, I did both the goblet squat and the regular dumbbell squat. Again, goblet squat I really like. It mimics what a front loaded barbell squat would be. So if you do any front squats doing that, a goblet squat is the same. And if you like doing back squats, then doing these squats with either dumbbells to your side or if you want the idea of getting your shoulders back a little bit more, I do like putting them up on my shoulders. It makes me want to have a straighter back versus being pulled forward by the dumbbells. So you don't have to do both the goblet squat and the regular dumbbell squat for this workout when you're building it out for yourself. You can pick one or the other unless you really want to go crazy. But for these squats, since they are a little bit heavier with the dumbbells, I recommend doing four sets of eight to 12 reps. That way you can go a little bit heavier and you won't really fatigue yourself. For all of my workouts at the very beginning, I like doing a compound movement with an extra set but lower reps versus everything else, which I typically do for three sets, 12 to 15 reps. So that is what I recommend for the squat, either one of these, that would be your compound movement for your workout. Now going into some isolation exercises, the very first one that I did was the straight leg deadlift. I have both of my feet planted firmly on the ground, a little slack in my knees. Again, you never really wanna lock out your knees and using a hip hinge, which I will actually post the card and it down below in the description box of my last video that's all about the hip hinge. You will hinge up the hips, bring the dumbbells down, and that will really, really work out your hamstrings. And again, this is something that you can do for three sets, 12 to 15 reps per set. And if you want a little bit more of a challenge, you can keep one foot planted down, have a little staggered stance to where your toes are up on the other foot, and go down, and then that mimics a single leg deadlift. So that will really target one side over the other. And when doing any exercise that's one leg before the other, always start with your weaker side first. So for me, that is my left side. If you want even more of a challenge, you can do just single leg deadlifts. So having your one foot planted firmly on the ground, again, weaker side first, and a hinge at the hips while bringing your back leg up. These would really help with your balance, but again, if your balance isn't good at all, then just do the staggered straight leg deadlift. I don't have amazing balance, but I do try to do these a little bit every once in a while just to work on my balance and to work on the strength of both sides of my leg. 
Next up is some lunges. So you can either step forward and do a front lunge and then step back to the start or step back and do a reverse lunge and then step forward to the start to be one rep. Again, you would do three sets, 12 to 15 reps on each side. And these really target the quads, but do a little bit of hamstrings and glutes as well and do whatever's most comfortable for you when making your workout using all these exercises. You can either do front lunges or reverse lunges. You don't have to do both in the same session. Do whatever you feel most comfortable and this will also really help out with your balance and just full body stability. Because you're holding the weights down there, this will also really help you focus on your core stability. If you want even more of a challenge from the lunges, you can do a Bulgarian split squat. This, you will have your toes on a bench behind you. It would just be a standard bench height, but of course, if there's no bench available, but there's some blocks or a little ledge, then typically a bench height, which would for me be a little bit below my knees and you'll put your feet back there, step forward, and this goes for the lunges as well. Step forward so when you go down in that bend, your front leg will go to 90 degrees. You don't wanna be going too much further than that, but for the Bulgarian split squats, you will have a slight lean forward at your hips and kind of push down at an angle. So instead of dropping straight down, like with a lunges, drop it down and slightly back. That way you can really push all your weight back and then lift back up to the start from your heel that's on the ground. To get some hip extension exercises in without any machines or without a barbell, you can do the just regular lying down glute bridge. You can just lie down and do it without any equipment at all. To give yourself more of a challenge, you can throw on a band or a hip circle, which is just like a really intense band. I'll link the one that I used down below. And you can also add some weight just by putting a barbell on your hips. Of course, make sure it's not rocking back and forth and you're not throwing it onto your hips so you're bruising your hip bones, gently place it on your hips and then go up. You will have your shoulders firmly planted on the ground as well as your full feet. You will push up using your heels and when you get to the top, give your booty a nice little squeeze. That way you can really get your hamstrings and glutes. The further out your legs are, the more hamstrings it will get and the closer in that your legs are, the more quad it will get. So just having it to where when you're at the top, your legs are about 90 degrees is the perfect spot to get both things. And these, you can also do three sets of 12 to 15 reps and have it as challenging or as not challenging as you want. Again, utilizing bands and weights. To challenge this even more and to replace a barbell hip thrust, you can use that bench that you were using for your Bulgarian split squats or any bench or ledge of that height. Make sure it's nice and comfortable on your back. Get up against it so the back of it, the edge is right underneath your shoulder blades and you can just do hip thrust that way. Again, you can make it more challenging by adding a dumbbell on top or any bands. And this is essentially just an elevated bridge and it does allow you to get more quad action in there. And remember that when you're at the top, you want your knees to be at 90 degrees and you're pushing off from your heels. Have your feet firmly planted, but you'll be pushing off your heels to really feel it through your posterior chain, which is your hamstrings, glutes, and lower back and give your glutes a nice little squeeze so you can get that full booty workout. If you want even more of a challenge with these and you want to work unilateral exercises, which is one leg at a time, similar to the lunges or to the Bulgarian split squats, you can do a B stance hip thrust. So you will get set up in the same position, having both feet on the ground, and then again, using your weaker leg first, that one will stay fully on the ground the opposite leg will go up to where the heel is on the ground next to your other foot. So that way all of the weight and everything that you're pushing up, since you push off through your heel there, will be coming from the foot that's fully on the ground. So again, for me, that is my left side first. And you can just go up and that will target both sides, but we'll really focus on whichever side you're working first. And then again, to make it a bit more challenging, you can add a weight on top. And when you have that weight on top, put it on the side that you are working to where it's from your midpoint to off that edge, if that makes sense. You can see it in the video here. 
And for again, for these, whether you're doing the bridges, the hip thrust, or the B stance hip thrust, pick one. So if you're super new to it, I'd say go with the bridges, add some bands, add some weights, work your way up. Then you can do a hip thrust, add some bands, add some weights. And then if you really wanna work on unilateral exercises and try to work get both sides to be equally strong. If you have a dominant side and you want to strengthen the other side, then the B stance hip thrust. But I would pick just one of those three and add that to your routine. That way you're not overworking yourself. And again, three sets, 12 to 15 reps. If you're doing the unilateral B stance exercise, and this also goes for the lunges and the Bulgarian split squats, that would be 12 to 15 reps on each side. And finally, calf raises. We don't want to forget our little calves. I feel like they get so overlooked because everybody's always focusing on those really big exercises, but calves literally get us everywhere. You really work them just by walking, but if you want to strengthen them a little bit more in the gym, that's super easy to do with just some dumbbells. So you can have a dumbbell in each hand. You don't have to go super heavy for these. And if you really want to, you can put a plate or something low to the ground underneath your toes. But again, this is a dumbbell only workout, so forgetting that plates exist. Have a dumbbell in each hand and you can do either all of them with your toes pointing straight or you can switch it up a bit and do toes pointing straight and then some with your toes pointing outward and some with your toes pointing inward. These, I would do three sets of 12 to 15 reps if you're doing it straight outward and inward or if you're just doing straight or just outward or just inward, then I would do three sets of 15 to 20 reps. Since it's calves and since you are going a bit lighter, you can go a little bit higher up in the rep range than you would with a heavier movement, such as the squat, the deadlift. So doing calf raises with just straight feet will work the full calf, both the soleus, which is kind of like the outside part of your calf, and the gastrocnemius. I totally butchered that, which when you think of calves and how there's just that muscle on top, that's what that muscle is. And then the side one is the solace. So doing calf raises with your feet pointed straight works both of those evenly. And if you do it with your toes out, it will really target the inside of your calves, the medial head of that muscle. And if you do it with your toes pointed in, it really targets the outside and really targets the solace muscle of your calves. So if you wanna get a nice well-rounded calf, hit the calves from all sides, then do 12 to 15 with your toes in each direction. And if you just wanna really quickly get calves done before you leave the gym, then do 15 to 20 reps of just toes pointed straight. Well, that is all for this dumbbell only leg workout. If you couldn't tell, it was so hot in that little apartment gym and it was just so humid and I was just going through them like crazy to where I didn't think it was going to be such an intense workout and I was dying and then my friend I thought she was holding the camera when I was going through everything and I wanted her to film it that way I can get my full body in and then she informed me that she forgot to hit record so Sarah I love you but you gotta hit record so when she finally did do it a lot of the parts that you did see I was dying because I had just gone through the entire workout only to have to do it again but it is done. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you utilize any of this either in the gym, at an apartment gym, at a hotel gym, or if you have dumbbells of your own. And let me know what you want to see more of on my channel. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe. I upload new videos every Wednesday. So until the next one, thanks for watching.